everybody, welcome back to the next part in my dialing in series. And this is kind of a special edition and one to fulfill a request I've had, I don't know how many times. Um, it's to take the Line 6 Variax. I'm using the uh, uh, JTV59 model for this. Doesn't matter which one you have, it's going to be the same uh, <clears throat> regardless. Um, and it is to dial in the acoustic tones from the Variax. Now, to be honest with you, I love my Variax. I've used it to, you know, for uh, 335 style sounds, Tele sounds, Strat sounds, Les Paul sounds, you name it, whatever's in there, I've used it in some capacity at some point. Not so much the acoustic. I've really just never looked into it. And I, I you know, I've always been a big fan, uh, if I'm recording in the studio, of using a real acoustic guitar years ago with a microphone in front of it. But more recently, I've been using the silent guitars, the Yamaha silent guitars, which have a really great uh, sort of mic modeling built into it, and I love them. They're really great, and I've had some great success recording with those. But having said that, there's a lot of folks who really do like to rely on their Variax uh, for acoustic playing, and really live, you know, to be able to switch uh, with a preset back and forth <clears throat> between, you know, going from electric guitar to acoustic, maybe even just a part of a song is a really nice thing. So this morning, I got up and I got uh, motivated and I thought, let's dial in a tone for this. And then I also use it to shoot a performance video. I was racking my brain, what could I do? And a song I've always loved is from the Dave Matthews Band, uh, Crash Into Me. And I thought, well, that would be a good showcase for an acoustic scene. So go check out the performance video uh, where I used just this preset with the acoustic model here. What are the models again? I wrote them down here. I used the Martin D28, 1959 Martin D28 model, and then for a little bit of the upper end, uh, I don't want to call it lead guitar, but it kind of is, I guess, um, higher rhythm guitar maybe. It was a Martin 018, a 1967 Martin 018, so more like a, a smaller parlor size guitar. <clears throat> so it has a little bit of a thinner sound. In the performance video, I kind of wished I hadn't used that one because uh, it was a little thinner, but I did and you know, whatever, it, it's there. Uh, I wasn't trying to recreate the, the sound of Dave Matthews guitar by any stretch. So, so what I did do though uh, is go into Helix and use the processing we have, obviously with no amps or cabs. And I thought, how can I make the Variax acoustic models better. Something that's gonna sit in the mix, something that's gonna work better live. Because a lot of people complain that they don't work. And I gotta tell you, they don't, coming straight out of the guitar. I found them kind of muddy. I found them, they, I found them much like it would be if you placed a microphone on an acoustic guitar in the studio and maybe didn't have the mic placed properly or a little bit too much boominess and uh, muddiness. So I kind of took care of that. So let's go over to HX Edit and see what we have. So what you'll see here first, let me pull up um, Line 6 Workbench. So you can see that I'm on the acoustic model. This is the 1959 D28, but as I switch pickup selector, I go to this Martin 018, and then this is a Gibson Jumbo, I believe, of some sort. And then if I press the uh, other button here, I get 12 strings as well. So that's kind of cool, and I'll kind of go through those. Uh, but I kind of dialed this down in for the uh, D28 mostly. So, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, anyways, now that we have that, let's take a look at what I did here. So <clears throat> let's start off just turning off all the processing and listen to what this sounds like uh, on just the Martin D28 setting. Nothing wrong with it, but in a mix, I find it's gonna be kinda... So, one thing I did automatically is I added a little bit of reverb just to give it a little bit of life. So I used a room reverb. You can shut this on or off if you don't like reverb on your sound. Uh, a decay of 7.2, pre-delay of 11 milliseconds, a mix of 37%. So that just caused this to happen. Again, just to give it a bit of that ambience of what it would be like if it was recorded in a room, right? I then also, at the start of my chain, used the LA Studio Comp just to give it a little bit of compression uh, to control some of the peaks. Now, the settings I used on that were peak reduction at 7, gain at 4.2, um, and, and mix at 75% just to have a little parallel compression. So again, with it off, it's this. Now that 
doesn't take care of any of the actual problem areas or my, in my opinion, what are problem areas. So what I did is I took the low and high shelf EQ, one of my favorite tools. I took all the frequencies above five kilohertz and boosted them by 12 dB. So a huge boost to give it some air up in the top end. Uh, I also went everything below 500 hertz and took it out, took that down by 3 dB to get rid of some of that low mid muddiness and some of the low end. The thing about acoustic guitar, especially if you're gonna use it in the mix, is you don't want it competing with, you know, kick drum, uh, bass guitar and all these things down the low end with just a bunch of kind of fatness that we don't need to be there. Now, th there is another side though that some guys are just solo acoustic players. Some people are just solo acoustic players and they just wanna play where they do have more fullness. So, you know, an easy thing to do would be to roll this up or down or another setting that I'll show you in a couple minutes. But here it is again with this off. Oh, let me get that off. Hear that low end and that muddiness? Here it is with this on. Not as muddy and a little more controlled low end. Now some people might find maybe the high end is too sparkly and you know we could always just pull this back maybe to there. Right? So just knowing how your tools work and which section of them is doing, you know, what job helps. So I liked it up here for the mix up at 12. But again, this is changeable. This is all personal preference, right? Now, the final EQ I brought in was a parametric EQ. And I took the uh, mid-frequency band at 460 hertz with a Q of 0.6, so quite broad, and I scooped that out by 7 dB to get rid of even a little bit more mud, but I put in a little tiny bit of EQ down at 150 hertz, uh, low Q of 0.9, and just boosted that by 1 dB. Uh, just to fill the bottom end in a little tiny bit. And I went up to eight kilohertz with a Q of 0.8 and boosted that by three dB. So let's turn that off and listen. Now I'll turn that on. So here it is without. Control of the low end and the muddiness is gone. And you know, I use, like I said, I use Crash Into Me. And I think it worked really nice for that. Now, what happens if we change acoustic models? Let's go to the little parlor guitar. Obviously a lot thinner. Uh, that's kind of the point of that guitar though. You know, but again, maybe you want more beef to that one. So you crank up some of the low end here. Or you come in and I'll just put that back to one dB where I had it so I don't forget. Uh, or you come into this EQ and maybe pull out some of the highs. Whatever you feel works for that. But then we have, you know, the jumbo guitar that gets in jump. And again, if I turn all of this off, here's what that sounds like without it.
Another thing we could do is bring a low cut in, you know, uh, up to around 130. <laughs> I didn't find I needed that on my settings, but. And then we have some 12 string models as well. Right, I think another 12 string here. however that goes, but that wasn't what I was trying to do with this. It was more like that type of a thing. What do you guys think? I hope that helps some folks um, to get their Variax sounding a little better in the mix. Uh, obviously there's some settings you can change, a lot of EQ stuff, you know, if you want a little bit more of that low, mid kind of muddiness, you know, roll some of this 460 hertz back in. If you want a little less of that air on the top end, roll the high gain back on the shelf EQ, you know. There's lots of things you can do here. Uh, if you don't like the reverb, turn it off. If you don't like the compressor, turn it off. But the EQ is the really important thing here. To getting that acoustic sounding like something that's going to work in the mix. So go give the performance video a listen if you don't mind. You can get to hear how uh, this guitar worked in the mix or this setting. I'll have this up on custom tone for anybody who wants it. Uh, and I hope you guys like it. You know, tweak it to your own, uh, uh, you know, uh, tastes and, and what you like with the settings I've showed. And I hope it helps out to get some uh, people some great acoustic tones of their very acts. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Please share the video and like it and subscribe to the channel if you don't mind. And if you haven't already and hit the little notification bell so you get notifications when I put new videos up. All of that helps me to keep doing what I do. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in. I will be back soon with some more content and ciao for now.